Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Next, let's set up a vanilla server. What do I mean by vanilla? Well, it's not just your favorite flavor of ice cream. No, by vanilla, what I mean is that this is a basic server, no mods and no enhancements. This is directly from the creators of Minecraft, Mojang. In this tutorial, I am assuming that you have the latest version of Java installed. First, what we need to do: head on over to Minecraft.net/download. If you are running a PC, you can download this minecraftserver.exe file, double click it and run it, and bam, you are running a version of Minecraft. But if you would like to allocate more RAM to your server, or if you're on a Mac, there are a few more steps that we need to go through. By default, the server that you just double click on and run is running at about 100 megabytes of RAM. Which is pretty small amount of RAM. Most people will change their server to run on a gig of RAM, 1,024 megabytes to be exact, or two gigs of RAM is also common. So to start off a server with more RAM, you need to do a little bit of stuff in the command line first. I'm going to show you how to do this on the Mac and the PC point of view, and then any time that they meet up, I'm just going to go ahead and do it on the Mac side because that's what I have in front of me. To get this uh, file that you need to, to start off with, head on over to minecraft.net again slash download. So where the PC version of the server was right here, you are going to click on this minecraft server.jar. When this downloads, go ahead and save it into its own folder, and let's call this server. And the reason I'm creating a folder and placing it inside of that folder is because when this runs, it will create a lot more files, and I'd like them all contained. So next, open up Text Edit or uh, Notepad on the PC, and you're going to copy a little bit of code. It'll look like pound sign bin bash cd, the current directory that the script is running in, executing Java and a minimum and maximum of a gig, looking for a jar file, and then the name of that jar file. On the PC side, it will look like Java, a minimum and maximum that Java will run, the jar file, and the name of that jar file. On the Mac side, make sure that you hit Format, Make Plain Text, and then Save This. The name that you save this under could be anything, but to make it easy, let's just call it server start.command. And I'm going to save it in the same folder that the server is located in. On the PC side of things, you are going to name it server underscore start dot bat, B A T. If you would like to copy this bit of code directly from our show notes, head on over to omgcraft.com slash 58, and you'll be dropped right into the show notes for this episode. Now that you have these lines of code copied into a sort of script, there's a few things we need to do first on the Mac side of things to make sure that it will run. It should just run just fine on the PC side of things. So now, let's go ahead and open up Terminal. And then I'm going to type out chmod space a plus x. What this is allowing is all users to be able to execute this file. I'm going to add a space, and then over here where I saved that command, I'm going to drag it in, and it has written out the path for me, just so I don't have to hand type that out and hit enter. Now that this is done, I can execute that command. On the PC side of things, you don't have to do it. Now, that we have done that, let's go ahead and run our server for the first time. Now, uh, where I'm doing this is inside the server file, and I just want you to remember that it is empty at the moment, and I'm going to just double click this start command. It's going to run it, open up a window, and over here on the side, it has created lots and lots of information for us to mess around with. And you can also see that this is the server running. Most people will go ahead and stop the server because in creating that file, we just don't want to make anything happen weird, so we're going to type the command stop. Now, there's one thing that is very important that I really want to touch on, and that is the servers.properties file. We're going to go ahead and open that with an application, and let me run through what some of these properties mean, because here is where you will be changing the things in your server. 
First, there are some generator settings, but I'm gonna skip over that. This level name is where, if you have a saved world that you would like to make public, drop it in and then rename this level name to the name that folder is. You also have your server port, 25565 is by default, but you can make it whatever you want. You can also set a server IP. You can do a few things with max built height, spawning NPCs, adding a whitelist, and having a hardcore mode, forcing a texture pack, allowing or disallowing PVP. Your difficulty here, I wanna to touch on, zero is peaceful, one is easy, two is normal, and three is hard. With game mode, zero is normal survival, where you have hearts and a hunger bar, and you can uh, do all the normal mining in game. One is creative, where you have unlimited blocks and your health and food don't matter. And then two is adventure mode, where you have a health and a hunger bar, but you cannot break blocks. Max players is the maximum amount of players that can connect to the server at one time, spawn monsters, generate structures. Now view distance is interesting. You can set this if you are worried about bandwidth on your server, it's how many chunks away that their view will load out. You can set this up to 15. And then the message of the day is the sentence that is displayed underneath the server name for everyone who adds your server to their server list. In the next video, we will be setting up a server that you can add modifications to. So let's get into that.